Today's video is quite fun because I'm going to share some of the different hacks or alterations you can make to my will address pattern. And I've got a few different ones that I think you guys will really like. And it's fun to just look at the pattern in a different way. One of the questions I've had a few times is how to bring up the neckline. And I've actually just put on the dress back to front. And I thought I would share this hack first. I won't show you how I make it in this hack because it's easy enough to do. I might make one actually that's got both of the backs. But you basically would just follow the pattern and do double of the back. I've literally just put this dress on back to front to show you that it would look good with the back being the front. But I think if you do both front and back as the back, it would look pretty good. I might even make one up at the end of this video to show you what it looks like, but this is pretty much what it would look like. <laughs> All you'd have to do to change the pattern would just be to find the center of the back and mark out where your um, buttonholes would go at the front so that you can have the tie at the front and not at the back. <laughs> and then obviously if you do like the back being lower then go ahead and do the front as the back and the back as the front. <laughs> it does hug the body very nicely actually back to front so I think I will make myself one with this high neckline later on in the video. But the first one I'm making is a bit of a fun one and quite different to me because it's a black dress. I don't remember making ever making a black dress really and yet black dresses are just so easy to wear you can just chuck them on and instantly look very put together so last night I was making some of these ruffles so I'm gonna have a ruffle trim all around the skirt but the changes I'm making to the pattern that's just an additional add-on and the changes I'm making to the pattern are I'm going to try the buttonholes a lot higher up so that the channel seam is just right on the edge of the neckline so there won't be ruffles like this and then I'm also going to add a little seam around the front and back that's going to be a little drawstring so that you can have a little tie at the front too. So that is the plan and then after this dress I'm going to make a two piece so we're going to make a top and a skirt out of the pattern and then yeah might finish with the double back version so i've made most of the dress up to the point where i need to attach the neckline so i'm going to go and find the placement of where i need to put the new buttonholes on the front and then we can stitch the facing on and then i can also show you how i'm going to be adding that little seam at the front so that we can add a little tie around it it's so easy. All I'm going to do for that part is add some bias trim um, to the front and back and I'm going to have a little gap um, for the seam so that I don't have to sew the bias on when the dress is all stitched together because I just love making life easy and doing everything flat and then just threading it through at the end. That will be much easier. <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you want a link to the original Willa dress tutorial I will leave that linked down below. It's much more in-depth and shows every single step of the process. So yeah, hopefully I'm covering everything in these videos and you can enjoy your will address pattern even more. So this is where I've got up to so far. I've got a load of ruffle, but that can be put aside for a while because we won't be doing that until right at the end. So I have some bias trim that is black so it matches the fabric. So this is my front piece and as you can see it's got all the channel seams ready to go in the back and then I am going to add this last channel seam along the front. It's going to be quite hard to show you because it's all black, I'm sorry about that. And I'm going to add this just on top of where that seam is attaching the skirt to the top part. I'm going to grab the skirt pattern piece so that I can see where the centre is and I'm going to make a tiny little mark about a centimetre away from the centre and then I'm going to do the same on the other side. 
So that will leave me a gap of about two centimeters at the front here and I'm going to cut the bias trim so I'm not going to stitch the bias trim all the way to the end I'm going to turn the end of it over and I'll stitch that down and then I will stitch it about two centimeters away from that side seam and then I'll stitch it all the way along and I'm going to fold down the end here as well at the other end so I need two lengths of that for the front and then the skirt is the same width on the front and back so I'm just going to cut the piece out now that I need for the back so I'm just going to do that the entire width across and I'll go and stitch those ends down as well just sewn the ends of the bias tape so that they're nice and neat and now I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine and I'm not going to pin it into place because I have that seam to use as a guide and I think that will be much easier than pinning it and I'm just going to start with the short pieces and I'm going to start them right at that centre notch that I made and I'm going to stitch it all the way down both sides leaving the ends open along that just on top of that seam so I found those centre marks that I made and I'm going to take one of the short pieces of bias tape and I'm going to start it on that notch and just stitch it as close as I can to the seam. Then we've got the back and we're going to attach that long piece all the way along with a gap of about two centimeters at the seam allowance edge. So that's the bias trim stitched on and now I'm going to find where to put my buttonholes. So there'll be a seam allowance of one centimeter at the top. So I've just moved those buttonholes up so when I have facing on the seam allowance everything will be right at the top. Finish sewing the buttonholes and now I'm just opening up the holes so that they'll be ready once I've put the facing on. So I have my facing ready to stitch on so I'm going to stitch that on with a one centimeter seam allowance and then we will under stitch it away and then we will flip it over into the inside and stitch a channel seam of one centimetre all the way around the top. I'm now going to thread the cord into this channel seam at the top. So I go in through one buttonhole and then I just work my way all the way around. I've moved the dress over to here so hopefully you can see it a bit better. But I've got the cord in the neckline facing. So now I can go ahead and add the elastic, sew up the sleeves, the sides, and then we can put the other cord in the front bit here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then I will catch up with you guys once I have finished it. This is what the neckline's looking like so far. I actually love how this dress looks in black. And in the back, it just looks like that. And now I'm going to go ahead and thread this tie through the center channel seam that we did at the front all the way around and then it could be a nice little tie detail at the front. <laughs> Let's see if I can thread it through whilst wearing it. This probably is not going to be very easy to do. 
So as you can see, this is where I've left the gap by the seam allowance, and then I just come out of that channel and then into the back channel seam that I made at the back. <laughs> this is really the worst fabric, I'm so sorry for showing you. But I think that's added another nice little detail to the dress. I'm gonna finish the rest tomorrow and show you what it looks like with the ruffles because I'm very excited to add these. Maybe I can find a better way of showing the black. <laughs> so next day I've just finished hemming the bottom of the dress and now I'm going to place the ruffle on top of the skirt and see where I want it to be placed. So I'm just going to pin that on and then if I need to make more I will show you guys how I made it. I wanted to show you how to make the ruffle, so I changed the foot and I have this really good one that does a rolled hem for you, well, sort of, <laughs> for you. You still have to fiddle around with it a little bit, but it is quite neat once it's up and working. Start with a long piece like this and you just wrap one edge into the foot. So it's got this little bit at the front that you just feed the fabric into and roll it over. And then you just start stitching. And as you go you have to still sort of fold the fabric over but then it feeds it in. And you end up with a neat little rolled hem. So I do that on both sides and then I take it over to my other sewing machine. So I'll just quickly hem both of these sides. Okay, I'm on the floor because I have no more room on tables for a machine. <laughs> so I've got my little old sewing machine here. It's still very good and it does a lot of things like buttonholes and other things that my industrial machine can't do. And I have one of these little gathering foots for this machine and it works really well. So I just put that on my machine. And then I change the length to be the longest it can be, so five. And I put the tension at the highest it can be, which is nine. And then all you do is just try and stay in the middle and start stitching. And you can see it's already started to gather up at the back. So I just keep going, do the whole length, so quick and easy. I knew it. if I said that, it would break. <laughs> Why does it do that to me? I'm not having a very good day. I think this thread is the issue. I wasn't using this thread before. So I need a strong cotton thread for this. Then take the ruffle to the ironing board and I try and sort of lay it flat a bit again. And then I just press gently on top of them to make the ruffles sit flat. So now we have my next lot of ruffle done and I'm going to put the dress on and just see where I think the placement should go for the second one. Okay, I think I decided the placement of the next ruffle and I think it's going to be quite a bit higher than the other one. I just think that will look, almost give it that like tiered effect to the skirt. Here is the finished black willow dress. 
just need to tighten this channel seam that I've got on the front. This is the only downside of adding the channel seam is that whenever you take it on and off you kind of have to undo it each time which is a bit annoying. So I wouldn't really recommend adding this channel seam around the middle but I do love how this has turned out and it's got quite a lot of shape to it this dress. So this is using just a bog standard cotton poplin which is definitely the thickest I would go with this dress. If you're okay with the dress having a lot of volume then go for it but if you don't love too much volume in a dress then I would go for something a lot thinner. I love the ruffles, I think they're so fun. I think this is such a good evening dress. Um, I, can, I can definitely see myself wearing this to winter parties. And I really like the simplicity of having the neckline without the ruffles as well. I think that works nicely. So there we go, there's the first Willow dress alteration. Next up we're going to make a two piece set. I'm going to have a very cute little crop top and maxi skirt or midi skirt. I'll probably do midi length. So I'm going to do this in this gorgeous cotton gingham that I picked up in Copenhagen. It's just a super lightweight cotton. It's a similar weight to cotton poplin um, so I think this should work really nicely. So I'll show you how I adapt the pattern to do these changes. This one's super easy. So we've got a skirt pattern piece here and what you need to do is add on a waist band at the top. So we can actually just do this as a separate piece altogether. So you want to find a piece of pattern paper that is wide enough for your waistband. And I'm just gonna draw a straight line to start with and square it off at one end. And then we're just gonna be using thick elastic for the waistband make it really nice and simple and so you're just going to want to measure the width of your elastic. So mine's about two and a half centimetres so I want to double that and then add a centimetre at each end. Okay then we're going to mark where the end is and then we can just square that off. And there we go, we've now got the waistband pattern. So this will be cut on the fold and we'll need two of these. Okay, now I've got both of my waistband pieces and I am going to put them good sides facing on top of my skirt piece. So I've added the pockets and I've overlocked, done all the stages in the skirt up until now. So now I'm going to take one of these waistband pieces and then I'm going to go and sew that all the way along and then press it up. So now we've got that waistband on and I've pressed up the seam allowance into the waistband and now we can stitch the two skirt pieces together good sides facing. So you can sew straight down that waistband and then carry on all the way around the pockets and down the end of the skirt. stitch those pieces together I'm going to find the seam and press it open. So now that both sides of the skirt are attached we can then fold down the top of the waistband. It's a good idea to check that you've got the width there still that will fit in your waistband, perfect. So now we want to fold the waistband down and over and we want it to go one centimetre over that stitch line where we attached it to the skirt. Now we're going to take this back over to the sewing machine and I'm going to stitch on the good side and it will catch the back of this. I'm going to go all the way around but I'm going to leave a gap about this much somewhere along the way so that we can thread 
the elastic in. So I'll just be using that seam we created and stitching just above it. I'm going to measure how much elastic I need to go around the waist. And then we can find the hole in the waistband that we left, which is just here. And we can just start threading through the elastic. I'm just trying to skirt on to get the right fit. I think I need to tighten the elastic a bit more. That feels good. So I'm going to go and stitch the elastic together. So that's been stitched together and now you can just let it fall into that channel seam. Now we can stitch that hole in the waistband. I just tried the skirt on to check the elastics fitting well and now I'm adding some little stay stitches down the side seams just to stop the elastic from twisting so that's the skirt almost done I just need to go and hem it for the top it's just going to be as simple as chopping a bit off the pattern I'm not even going to chop it I'm just going to fold it up so that you can then use it again as the pattern so firstly ignore my pattern and how it looks because this was an early twirl <laughs> that it doesn't look like this if you have the pattern. So I'm going to draw across a centimetre below the middle channel seam. Okay, so now we've got our shortened bodice. We can go and cut that out. And the channel seam construction will be a little bit different to how I do it usually. So I'm going to cut this out and then I'm going to explain how different the channel seam placement is going to be. It'll still be in the same area but we're going to have to put it on after we've sewn the side seams this time rather than before. Another little hack for the facings, if you're short on fabric, which I'm not, but I thought I'd show you anyway, because I quite like saving fabric, is to have one on the fold, and then the other is to have a seam allowance of one centimetre at the front, and then just connect it up afterwards. This would usually be on the fold, but I'm going to go over to the sewing machine and just stitch down the edge there. So next day I thought I'd share where I've got up to with the top part of this cord set. It also went and added a tie to the front of the skirt. I literally just stitched it on halfway on the front, so it doesn't go through any of the channel seams, but sort of gives the illusion that it does. So this is where I've got with the top so far. I have put the sleeves on, I've put the facing on, and that's all ready to have the tie go through it. And I've also done the channel seams in the sleeves ready to have elastic go into them. And then I also closed up the side seam, which you don't usually do in the construction of this dress um, until you've put the elastic in. So I'm gonna put this down on a table and it'll be much easier to show you the next step. So I realised last night that I could use the bottom hem as one of the channel seams so I'll only need to put bias binding around once and then I can just fold the bottom up. So I'm going to go and press the bottom of this top up by just over one centimetre and press that all the way around and then I'm going to stitch that closed but leave a gap where I can thread the elastic into, and then we can add the other channel seam. Now I'm gonna measure up and see where, 
how high up I need to put this bias trim. So I'm just going to pin that into place and then leave the end so that I can join the ends together when I get round to it. But this needs to go all the way around the bodice. Got both the channel seams that we needed now and I'm going to measure around my ribs to see how much elastic I need and then I'm going to measure the other length as well and then I attach one end to this threader, threading tool and then with the other end I safety pin it onto the opening of the channel seam so I left a gap here so I'll just safety pin a bit above it. And then I will feed this through the channel seam. And then once it's come out the other end, we can take this over to the sewing machine and stitch the elastic together. I've just stitched the elastic together and now I'm going to let it fall into the channel seam. And I'm going to go and stitch that hole closed. Then we'll just do the same to the lower channel seam. Now we've got both of those channel seams and it's starting to take shape now. I'm going to go and add the tie in at the top and then the elastic in the sleeves. I think I might be a little bit obsessed with this. It is so cute! <laughs> this is it with the skirt. So I'm going to go and try it on and show you what it looks like. This is such a fun little two-piece. The only thing I wish I'd done now is bring the neckline up higher. Um, so I might try swapping it round, see what it looks like at the back. So this is with the back as the front. It feels a lot more secure. I think I know where I went wrong with the fit of the top. I think I measured too high up to put that second channel seam, which is why it doesn't feel like there's any room for my chest. <laughs> so I might actually try taking out the elastic in this channel seam that's under my bust and see how it looks with just this one channel seam at the bottom. <laughs> that has sort of sorted the problem. So now I can have the neckline where it's meant to be. So that's another note on the pattern. It is mentioned in the introduction but, but, but if you have a larger chest sometimes it's best to move the channel seams further down just to allow for your boobies. <laughs> so yeah, even quicker than expected because then you can skip adding that channel seam above the bottom one and make your cute little top. I have this beautiful check fabric from Merchant and Mills and I thought this would look very good as a little top. And I'm gonna show you a very, very simple top that we can make with the Willow Dress pattern. So the pattern pieces you will need are just the back bodice, the sleeve piece, and the back facing. So we're gonna cut out two of the back facing and two of the back pieces, and then four of the sleeve as usual. So I've cut out two of the back bodice pieces and I've attached the sleeves and the front and back, um, which is basically exactly the same. And I've also sewn the facing. So I'm just going to go and attach the facing. I feel like this is going to be quite a short top, um, which would be fine if you're petite. Um, but I may add like a, a chunky extra hem at the bottom if I decide it. I want it a bit longer. So something to think about when making this little top, um, but it could be a very cute little crop top. I was also thinking how sweet would this look with a little matching pair of shorts, but that's just me giving myself too much to do. <laughs> the 
tie, I'm going to use just this bit of trim and I'm hoping it's going to be long enough. It might not be, but if it's not, then I can just take it out and replace it with something else. Now I've got the neckline all gathered up and I'm going to go and add the elastic into the sleeves and then we can figure out if it's too short and add some length, maybe, but it's looking okay. So I'm going to go and put this elastic in. This is how the top is looking so far now that I've got the elastic in the sleeves and the tie is in. So this is the length it goes to when you haven't added any length to that top section. You could obviously leave it like this, it looks very cute. You could also add a channel seam here and have it gathered all the way around. I might add a little bit more length to the top, so I'll just cut some long strips, fold them in half, attach them together and then s stitch it on like a big loop, basically. Here is the finished little top now that I've added this chunky hem to the bottom of it. I think this is so adorable. If you don't want the chunky hem you could just add nine centimeters to the bottom of the bodice pattern and it would get to about this length. I'm 5'7 for reference. This is going to be such a great little easy summer top. I cannot wait to wear it. I feel like I do need to get a bit of a longer tie at the front. So there we go, that's a cute little willa top. <laughs> Next up I'm going to make a cute little mini dress, so for this I am going to raise the neckline a little bit and then I'm also just going to continue the length of the top all the way down, so I'm not going to bring it out, I'm just going to keep it a straight little mini dress and I'm not going to add any of the channel seams around the centre, I'm just going to have it gathered around the neckline and there's going to be no sleeves involved, it's going to be sleeveless little mini dress. So let me show you the changes I'm going to make. So I'm going to trace off the pattern piece. If you don't have this much paper you can use just a little bit of paper and add it to the top or if you haven't printed it out yet or I mean if you haven't cut it out yet you can change, change it before you cut it out. I'm actually going to make this into a mini dress so I'm going to add some length underneath this top as well. So let me measure and see how much length I want to add. Okay, so we've added the extra amount at the bottom and now we're going to trace off the pattern at the top. So I'm going to raise that front neckline up by three centimeters and this pattern is including seam allowance so technically it's only rising up by two centimeters. And then you just want to square off from that center front square that off and then just sort of follow the curve around and up and softly blend it into that arm. We then need to make a new facing for the front so you need to find six centimeters on your pattern master or just draw lines six centimeters away and go all the way around And eventually we will trace this off. So there's our new higher neckline and length of dress. So I'm going to trace off this facing. I've just cut the front out and then so that I don't have to change this pattern and trace it out again for the back to add the length, I'm just going to pin the back pattern on top. Cut all of the pieces out to start with and I'm going to try doing this as a sleeveless dress. So I'm going to notch on the dress where I think the sleeve should stop. So I'm going to go up about four centimeters on the sleeve and make a notch there. And then I'm going to transfer that notch across to the dress. And I'm cutting in about one centimeter. So quite a big notch we want to cut in because we're going to then do a rolled hem on this piece here. 
Then I'm going to sew the front and back pieces together, just at the shoulder seams to start. Now that I've sewn the shoulders together, I'm going to open out the dress. And starting from the notch on one side, I'm going to do a little mini rolled hem all the way along until I reach the other notch. I'm going to change the facing a little bit and I'm going to remove some of the width because if I'm not having sleeves then I don't want the facing to be popping out underneath. So I'm going to trim it by about one centimetre so there's just a bit less on show under the arm. So I'm just going to go and trim that using my overlocker. Because we have no sleeves in this dress, I'm going to attach the side seams together using a French seam. So to do that you just sew them wrong sides facing first with a little seam allowance of about 0.5 or maybe even less. And then you turn it the other way and stitch down with a larger seam allowance. I think this would be such a nice little nighty or summer dress. Depends how see-through this fabric is. <laughs> so I've got the ruffles roughly where they need to be. I might put it on a mannequin in a minute and alter it. So I'm just going to go and hem this and then I shall show you what it looks like. Here's the finished little mini dress. This is so cute and this fabric, oh it's just amazing. It feels so lightweight. And comfortable. This is a perfect little night dress. I could probably get away with it as a day dress but I think it's just too comfy not to be a nighty. <laughs> Obviously you could make this full length and then maybe have a belt or something as well that could also look cute. Basically the options are endless once you start playing around with the willow dress pattern. I really hope you guys found this video interesting or useful if you already have the willow dress pattern. If you have any more questions about alterations then let me know in the comments down below and I will do my best to get back to you or if you've got a really pressing question send me a message on my website and I usually get back to you. The pattern will be linked down below in the description bar along with where I got all of my fabrics from. I hope you guys are having a great day and I will see you in my next video.